Um, but <laughs> let's give it a go and see what's going to happen here. Eh? Alright, so that looked pretty, pretty freaky. And at the moment I don't have any movement over my mouse, so let's have a look at what's happening here. So basically that's happening every frame. So we want to create that finish event to actually drive the, um, the finished event. So let's do that. But that worked quite well, I was quite pleased with that. Boom. So we might, uh, we might actually just want to, for the sake of this, this sometimes works, um, but let's just create a weight node. Uh, wait, maybe like two seconds. That should be enough to, to scare. And I mean, this is pretty much all there is to the horror games, unless you have the, the other thing that you're like, oh shit, what was that? And then you like run away. You could make the, um, the figure um, follow the player then, I guess using uh, the nav, the nav component. Mm. So that, that's blocked off the player. And you could even make it come this way and then the player has to find an alternate, an alternate path. So in that case, that actually might be a good option to um, then double back for the player to come down this path where the, the figure came from. And we could use this as like a, a drawing thing, now that the player's felt danger. He's like, oh, damn it. And so he's gonna run this way, and he's like, oh, red, okay. That must mean I'm going in the right direction. And then we can expand um, the the story down down this way. But you see with the, the general layout is um, horror games use one of two things. They use a double back where you do the jump scare and then you turn around and run and then that opposite map needs to be well designed so the player knows where exactly he's going to be going um, or they use quick time events which everyone loves not really but um, so normally if you went up here the thing would jump down and then you might have to like tap Q or press Q because it's on you and we triggered a animation sync so um, that's optimally what the deal is with this this stuff um, but for now, what we might do is we might actually start to work on the nav for this guy to follow us. And then we, we can run back this way to, to here. Excellent. So what I might do first is let's just alternate this, um, movement. Let's make it like 10. Just to, just to give the player a little bit more of a... Feels a bit more snappy. Oh boy. So just, I mean, this might be a little bit fast. Um, might make it seven. But yeah, we get we get the idea. All right. Alrighty. So let's um, let's create that nav component. So I'm not sure if and. Uh, Playmaker 1.8.2 if we actually have the anim the nav um, section. So let's just have a look. Let's go to here. Let's actually create a component. What if we put nav? Alright, so I'm pretty sure they, they haven't put it in. So what we need to do is actually download the, um, the ecosystem for Playmaker. So we can go to huitonggames.com I'll load up the link. Alrighty, and you can actually get it from this link. This is the, the latest one, Playmaker Ecosystem version 0.4.8. Um, we can click on this download ecosystem. And that will download that, and then we can actually just bring that straight into Unity. Just drag it in. It's going to do the rest for us. And let it import. And it's going to finish compiling. All right. Playmaker add-ons ecosystem. Eco browser. Use the ecosystem. Now let's look up nav. Uh, or actually, uh, it's agent. Or uh, 
package. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Let's have a look which one it is. Playmaker pun. Playmaker animator proxy. Uh, let me just double check what it was called. That's right, it was called pathfinding. So if we look up path, uh, it shouldn't bring that up. Uh, pass, 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 pass. Pathfinding, there we are. <laughs> As are, you actually have to be very specific. So you can click get. And that's going to import that, and then it's going to import everything else. Click import, it's going to then compile the package. So once that's done, excellent. So now, let's come into that new FSM. And let's have a look for the nav mesh agent. And we want to, well actually, we want to go to the figure, um, figure trigger 2. And instead of destroying the object, because uh, we're going to wait for two seconds, um, then let's. What we want to do is come back to this nav mesh, and we want to set the agent's destination as a game object. Excellent. It's going to say you want to create that, and we want to um, nav mesh agent. Oh, it's not going to be that. We want it to actually be um, the capsule. Capsule 2, and let's chuck that on. We can get rid of this one. The destination will be the player. So that player. So now, let's press play. Okay, <laughs> let me just firstly just slow the guy down because it's a bit ridiculous. Uh, let's go to movement, edit, and let's make it 6.5, 6.5 seems feasible. That should be nicer. Alright, that feels, that feels more logical, okay. Alright, so we broke it. That has been placed on a nav mesh. Okay, so we haven't baked any of the environment yet. So, uh, two things that you need when you want to use nav mesh. You need to have an environment, uh, so we can check that off. And we need to have objects set as static. So right now you can see none of them actually are ticked. So what we need to do is let's just come and tick it. That's, so that's the floor. So I just want to show you what's actually going to happen. So go to Window, Navigation. And if you click Bake, you'll notice nothing is actually getting um, sorted. It's just saying, okay, well, this is the only static object. So this guy can just roam anywhere he wants. But what we want to do is let's just come and select all our walls. Um, you can actually do it bulk as well, but I just want to show you. Um, so once you learn this way, it's going to always work. So then we've got two walls left, three walls, there we go. All right, so then we want to come up to Inspector, click that, and then all of these are now static. As you can see, they're all, they're all ticked up here. Now let's get back to navigation and click bake. And now you can see it's actually been divided and we have the walls um, and all this blue area is actually where the, the, the dude can walk around. So let's press play and let's see what's going to happen this time. If you'll make it around this tight corner. Alright, so the guy's the guy's chasing me right now. He's following he's following that path. Well, and his cape, we did not set him up in facing the right direction. So he's he's um he's doing a good job. And then because he came back the wrong way, he's going to die. Um, not really. It's we haven't really set up anything to happen once he reaches us at the moment. Um, so one thing we want to fix up is his cape direction. Uh, not sure what that was about, but let's <laughs> um, let's just flip this guy around so he's facing the right way. Excellent. Now let's just copy that and then we can paste that in. So let's try this again. Whoa, dude, what are you doing here? Alright, and he's obviously still a bit, sh um, he's not high enough. But because he has the, um, whoop, 